Welcome to our Ask the Expert series for adults living with hydrocephalus and normal pressure hydrocephalus. I'm here today with Dr. Abe Mogakar, a neurologist, and Dr. Mark Luciano, a neurosurgeon, with the Johns Hopkins Cerebral Fluid Center for CSF Disorders. It's fantastic to be here. Thank you both for joining us. It's Happy. So I want to focus on an NPH question that I think is one of the harder questions um, that we will get to the association and would love your feedback on it. And it really um, comes from, in fact, I might just read the question as it came to us on Facebook. So uh, my wife was initially diagnosed with dementia. We were relieved when we received the diagnosis of normal pressure hydrocephalus. Initially, her dementia symptoms seemed to go away after she got her shunt, but now they're back. Is this a problem with her shunt? So Dr. Mogukar, I'm gonna put this to you as our neurologist. Um, this patient's come to see you, and, and what do you do, and, and, and how do you determine if this is her shunt? Sure, one of the first things we do is to make sure that the shunt is actually working. Because even if you do an X-ray or a CAT scan and you see there's no break in the catheter, the, these catheters can rarely get obstructed internally. So we do some kind of testing first to actually ensure that the shunt is functional before saying there's something else going on. And unfortunately, as we all get older, uh, the incidence of many kinds of dementias increases. There are many neurodegenerative disorders that are closely linked to aging. For example, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Lewy body dementia, and there are many others like that where the incidence goes up the longer we live. So by the time, say, we, we are 85, there's almost a 50 to 60% chance that we will have one of these neurodegenerative disorders. And having hydrocephalus doesn't exclude you from developing these other disorders. These other, these other disorders can be very slowly progressive over time. They're often difficult to diagnose because again, there are no good tests uh, while living to make these diagnoses accurately. So suppose you have hydrocephalus, you get a shunt, but you also develop one of these other disorders. Over time, they progress. And when that happens, even though the shunt is working, the benefit from the shunt doesn't last because these other disorders then catch up and then they are the primary drivers of your dementia symptoms, whether they be cognition or gait. I, I, I just wanted to emphasize that there's two phases here in a sense. And, and one is once we put a shunt in, it's sort of our obligation to make sure that shunt's working. And one thing that the patient should not accept is after the, the operation, if, if the transient improvement goes away, um, it being dismissed as, well, I guess that's all there was. That's all the improvement there was. I guess a uh, shunt really won't help you. Because with x-rays, even with CT scans, we can't tell if that shunt's working. So your physician will more likely do a shunt patency study, do a tap. What we often do is something less invasive first because we have the possibility of adjusting the shunt we say, well, let's try and drain a little more and so forth. In other words, there should be a, a protocol to investigate if the system can be optimized. Uh, what, what I tell people is like, it's our obligation to make sure after you've had gone through putting the shunt in place that it's working well and doing as best as it can for you. Uh, but then there's the second phase, and that is it is doing the best it can, and we know that there are other issues that can evolve over time that limit the ability of the shunt. So we're gonna, our job is to, to, number one, make sure the shunt is doing the best it can, and then also try and uh, keep our, our mind open to the other possibilities. I just wanted to, to say that we don't want people to walk away and say, well, I guess, I guess it's those other things, and not have the shunt looked at. Right, and I'm, I don't know, but are there any studies that show whether there is a, a higher incidence if you have one form of dementia that predisposes you to hydrocephalus or vice versa, if you have normal pressure hydrocephalus, that you're predisposed to developing one of the other forms of dementia? That kind of research is actively being done. There are no definitive studies out there as of yet. So that shouldn't, people shouldn't automatically assume um, or be scared that just because they've developed normal pressure hydrocephalus, they, they're they going to go on to develop something else. Um, but at the same time, if they are in a situation such as uh, this gentleman's wife where 
we saw improvement with, with uh, cognitively once a shunt was placed, but you know, maybe a year or two out, we're seeing some of the dementia symptoms start to come back. First thing, make sure that the, sy the shunt system's optimized, but if it is optimized, that this could be what is really happening and they really need to work closely with their neurology team. That's good. Okay. All right, well, thank you both so much for joining us today. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. And for those of you that submitted questions through Facebook and Twitter, thank you for being a part of our Ask the Expert series. And we'll see you in our next segment. Thank you.